if. Opening on a rainy sci-fi scape that is so generic I could be watching TMNT, Nimona, or basically anything in the animation wing of the Star Wars franchise. This is the start of season two. I should be punched betwixt the eyes and marveling at Marvel. Not immediately checking my phone because I've seen this before. Welcome to Xandar. A place where everyone's luck eventually runs out. Okay, that sounds foreboding until you realize this isn't a unique quality. Anyone's luck can run out at any time. Unless you're Domino. Also, because I've just been reminded of what an absolute joy Domino is, here's a sin for Marvel not including her in Deadpool 3. But the question is... Who? So generic animation and a generic script? Did anyone watching this think for even a second that sentence would end any other way? I don't need Black Order trash telling me how to do my job. That's trashist. All quests for redemption begin in darkness. They do not. Nova Prime gave me a way forward. No reason to drag the Transformers franchise into this. We can only handle so much disappointment. Seek the light. Be the light. Never stray from this path. Worship lyrics from my upbringing in the AG cult somehow make their way into the episode. When the man who destroyed my first home came gunning for my new one. Well, not so much gunning as hammering. I don't think we've ever seen this guy use a gun. Aren't you supposed to be a weapons expert and assassin? She locked down Xandar behind an impenetrable planetary shield designed to last for 50 years, putting the planet out of his reach. Only 50 years? That's half a lifetime to a puny human with a few prescriptions and a collagen supply. That's a speed bump to a Cree. Memories I could use. <laughs> you and I, Nebby, we make quite the team. Sort of sad that the database memories Nebula is bragging about seems to just be one four second memory on repeat. Hmm. Oh, Yondu. What did you get into? Better question, why did you put your special spherical map thinging in your arrow that could be activated randomly after your death? The plot needs it, but this is dumb. Riot in progress. Send two more units to the Zandarian Mall, stat. Being an advanced alien civilization and still having malls. Hell, I wish I could also send our pathetic ignorant race for still having them in 2024. Oh wait, I can. Chopping on surfaces like this will dull your knives. High rollers tables, sis. Reminding me that Korg exists after Thor Love and Thunder. What kind of absolute freak would know what this is? Oh, that's an old citywide mainframe core. This may be the best example of a nearest person happens to know what a mysterious object is, despite the object failing to be discovered after running through every system known to exist cliche that I have ever seen. And the best examples are rewarded with a sin on this channel. I need to get into that mainframe and destroy those codes before they get out. You could also just delete the codes from working and install some new ones for later. You know, through a computer or something. Contact IT. Do you think Nebula ever gets headaches from her facial muscles being in a constant scrunch? I mean, I know she's metal, but even machines need to relax their gears to avoid repetitive stress injuries. I waive all the rights. Whoa, now, hold on. You don't have to waive all of the rights, just the one specifically related to legal responsibility in the event your head gets blown off. You can just go ahead and keep the rest of your rights, Nebula. Let's not be hasty. <laughs> I know Nebula is a certified badass, but if your guard robot is this easy to disable, you really just have yourself to blame. What are these pacifist guard bots? I've seen airbenders that were more aggressive. To be clear, her plan is to draw her prisoner to the center of all the prisoners where the good guys will gather to stop her from doing the naughty thing. Then release the very bad people to kill the very good people so she can escape to save the entire planet. This is what the trolley problem is all about, people. Sacrifice the few to save the many. At least in the train scenario, they die quickly. Here the people are all being beaten to death. But it's okay, Nebula's super cool. I didn't break you out of jail to point out the obvious. You didn't break him out of jail at all. You broke him out of prison. Remember, jail is where you go until you're sentenced. Prison is where you go afterward. Come on, Nebula. I thought you were a detective. And don't touch anything. Trusting that the prisoner you broke out can be left well enough alone while you render yourself extremely vulnerable. At least handcuff him to something. Jeez. Ignoring movie-slash-TV show rules that all fires are immediately stopped by the presence of water. My simple brain refuses to acknowledge your possibly correct physics. Nothing can survive that. As if stealing from Blade Runner wasn't enough, this episode now decides it can rob the fugitive without consequence. And I'm here to tell you there will always be consequences. And sometimes those consequences are imaginary internet points called sins that cynical YouTubers think matter a lot. And hey, if Reddit can convince millions of people their imaginary internet points matter, why can't we? They had a hair spike in the armory. And Nebula perfectly picks up the pitch. Double psh, psh. 
being anywhere early enough to see the crack of dawn. This loading bar is infuriating. When the action kicks off, it's moving fast like fiber, but now that we need a bit of dramatic timing, it slows down. Like my grandma just picked up the line while I was on dial up and was greeted with the we are see Let me see if I can translate. My Groot's a little rusty, but <clears throat> I think this I am Groot translates directly to play the hits. See? The show thought we wouldn't notice the lazy callback, but we did. It can be broken that easily? Holy sh**, the arrows are a baffling mystery of whatever the plot needs. Poor Ronin. There's pretty much no universe where he doesn't go out like a chump. He's defeated by dance-offs, Captain Marvel flying through his ships, and now he's slowly closing S.H.I.E.L.D. No skulls are leaking brains in this scene. Really? You're wearing a shoe with a spike on it, and you opt out of using it now? Why couldn't you just join me? She did join you at the start of the show. Did you not watch the first few minutes of the episode, Nova Prime? Most quests for redemption begin in darkness. Although most quests is better than all quests, this correction comes too late. So now you have two sins for being wishy-washy about redemption. No redemption for you. You are free to engage. We cannot allow it to enter USS airspace. Protect our precious airspace, soldier. Just make sure you shoot it down somewhere heavily inhabited like the center of New York city. A son of Earth and the stars whose pain and loss now threatens to destroy the very world he once called home. But for now, he'll settle with destroying these very threatening cop cars in midair because he's a show off. But in this universe, Yandu never had his change of heart. Denying Yandu the opportunity to become Mary Poppins. So he turned Peter over to his father. So in this universe, we don't get the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I'm sure that would bum a lot of people out, but I for one welcome the thought of not having to watch the animal torture in Volume 3, most of Volume 2, and everything Star-Lord does in Infinity War. You won't be needing these anymore, Peter. Hey, that's my line. Dozens of nearby solar systems, all destroyed within 24 hours of his arrival. And I thought my kid was a pain in the ass. Tony has spunk. This distastefully timed joke is brought to you by the MCU name-dropping Iron Man at any and every opportunity. And if Marvel enjoys waving Iron Man's d around so much, maybe they shouldn't have killed him in Endgame. Um, there's no vegetable. I am so confused right now. This looks like a bowl of cereal, so why is she asking for vegetables? Hank, please, don't hang up. If Howard knew Hank would hang up, why did he have to be the one to make this call? Why not Peggy? It's her plan after all, and I know who I'd rather be on the phone with. Dad, you should see this. You'd better come take a look at this cliche. And since this is Hank's daughter, I'll throw in a kids, too. Cinny is eating well tonight. Unlike Hope. Said the plane. One step ahead of you. Damn, was the pilot in on this call, too? Or is this incredible timing just a complete fluke? Also, they sent a plane? This looks like a regular ass house, so where are they parking a plane? Why aren't they sending a f***ing chopper? Hey honey, you wanna go to work with dad? Bringing your kid to work when said work involves saving the planet from a nuclear alien on a secret military base. Shouldn't Sha'eld have a daycare or something? They could call it Kindergarten Inside Dangerous Situations, or KIDS for short. You know, an acronym that actually works when you sound it out by the first letters. King T'Chaka of the African Kingdom of Wakanda. They don't typically involve themselves in global affairs, but... But they make an exception when the writers want to do something really cool, like bringing in Wakanda. I understand you even donated some vibranium to your efforts. Yeah, we made a shield out of it. We lost it in the Arctic. This little aside has nothing to do with this story. At all. Zip. It's literally just to reference Cap and nothing else. And if Marvel gets off on waving Captain America's d*** around so much, maybe they shouldn't have shelved him at the end of Endgame. Gorbachev wanted the target contained before he reaches Moscow, so he sent the Winter Soldier. F***ing Bucky. Also, <laughs> Gorbachev did what? Of all the assassins heroes or anyone else in Russia that they could send, they sent the American that they kidnapped and brainwashed? How f***ing risky is that? Wouldn't that cause an international incident? This is a former U.S. citizen. Isn't Russian David Harbour out there somewhere? Send him. Also part two, Age of Also. Hydra's Russian wing was the group that had Bucky Barnes and turned him into the Winter Soldier. How exactly did Gorbachev find out about Bucky? Did Hydra send him a memo? Oh, hey, just so you know, we survived World War II. Here's a list of our current projects and experiments. If you ever want to borrow one, just let us know. Love, Hydra. And if we don't get there and take him out now, the entire eastern seaboard won't be inhabitable for the next half century. And it'd be a shame if an alien pulled that off before humanity has a chance to with global warming. It's so much more satisfying when you do the hard work yourself. Silent but deadly. Good to see you. Naming any member of your team after a fart. 
staying in this ridiculous pose and risking being spotted instead of lying flat against the roof. When you have that special herb removed, your knees are going to remind you of this moment, just like mine do every time I play basketball, or go for a run, or stand up. Oh, f*** you. Why would the non-Guardians Peter in this alternate timeline have a soft spot for raccoons? Well, that went poorly. Do you mean your strategy to destroy the child's toy and trap him in a field of killer lasers failed to pacify the kid? Weird. Have you tried turning on Bluey? Pull back, killer. If the cube in that jet blows, there won't be a planet left to save. Then why did you bring it with you and leave it with Captain Eyeshadow? I've got a plan. Retreat. The Winter Soldiers, aka the best assassin in the world's usefulness during this glorious battle, was to fire a grenade launcher. Come to think of it, what did anyone do here? Big Man got big, got hit, and then got small again. T'Chaka got blown up, and so did Captain Not Marvel. You know, I'm kind of glad Marvel didn't take off in the 80s. Deus Ex Thorina, which could be mistaken for the MCU's entire business model right now. If in doubt, bring Hemsworth out. Jotunheim is the first to fall. Asgard, soon thereafter. Wait, Asgard? As in the place that has you, Odin, Loki, Lady Sif, and the other two protecting it? I'm having a hard time accepting that you could stop Peter on Earth and put him in a box, but not in Asgard, where you should theoretically be at your most powerful. Surely if you've come all this way, you must have a plan in mind. A celestial seedling. Um, where exactly did you pull that from, Thor? I don't see any pockets on that outfit, and this thing hardly seems collapsible. The seedlings are the fuse of Ego's expansion. A fuse that must be lit. Are you sure it must be lit? Couldn't it be yeet? Or totes? Or riz? I may not know what any of those words mean, but I've been told the YouTube algorithm will push our video higher if I say them. The seedling is protected by a veil of cosmic energy. Only a being of celestial origin can penetrate it. Thor said convenient plot thingy is protected by other convenient plot thingy, strangely. Hank's daughter is, apparently, allowed to roam through this shelled base with her father's pass, rocking out to her heart's content with no one caring or at least realizing that she's interacting with a nuclear holocaust in a jar. You're holding onto it pretty tight. I know if I still had mine, I'd probably be doing the same. Kids do not talk like this. This is how episodes with just 28 minutes to tell a self-contained story think kids talk. Missouri? <laughs> My dad said you were an alien. Feed me a corn dog and call me Springsteen. That's Missouriist. Where are my particles? And where's hope? And where's my key card? Thank you, sir, for the everything wrong with Hank Pym and five seconds or less monologue. Couldn't have said it better myself. To see to it that the boy submits to Asgardian justice. Which entails what, exactly? Eternal flagellation, impalement, some light maiming, you know, standard stuff. I don't know. It sounds a little less like justice in Asgard and a little more like justice in hell. Did you get your realms mixed up, Thunder Man? Staring! 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 Tense excitement? Hand over the seedling, and this will all be over. All this meaning us? Not gonna happen. <laughs> Does Carter actually have a f***ing machine gun pointed at the nuclear-powered, planet-reshaping alien god-man? <laughs> Oh, she f***ing does. You don't see that every day. Really? The generic swarm of meaningless minion fodder that the heroes can destroy at will without worrying about the pesky morals of killing an actual living thing? T'Chaka really needs to watch more Marvel movies if he thinks this is special. I'm so disappointed in T'Chaka in this episode, and I'm going to show you why. That is all of the ass kicking we get to see Black Panther do. It's so little, I can afford to show it to you again. That is seven seconds of T'Chaka action out of 28 minutes. This Sins video officially has more T'Chaka in it than this episode. And the man he knew, the friend he loved, would never take that shot. This is all very sweet and touching, but wasn't the entire point of the Winter Soldier's brainwashing that he'd be entirely incapable of communicating or being talked down? I feel like Winter Soldier and Civil War would have been much shorter movies if Bucky could be reasoned with. Bucky. Please. All this tension building suggests that Marvel thinks I'm willing to believe that there's a chance a Disney property will shoot an eight-year-old in the head with a sniper rifle. And that shows a fairly fantastic lack of self-awareness. 50 years later, Captain America is still saving my ass. Well, actually, you didn't meet Cap till around 1943, and this episode's set in 1988, so it's only been 45 years. Boom! Cannoned. A little bit of you will always live inside of me. You are human, after all. Actually, old man... My mom says I'm a Star Wars. I don't know what just happened or how it happened or why it worked, but yay for bright lights absorbing plants and catchphrases, I guess. To be honest, splitting the atom is a lot more intuitive. After watching Killian Murphy explain the atom splitting process to me for three hours, I feel qualified to say no, none of it is intuitive. Any word on silent but deadly? 
He's in the wind. Okay, for real now, are fart jokes seriously where we're at? You're a billion dollar franchise, MCU. Get your shit together and out of the script. Then I suggest you suit up, team. Hope and Peter are not suited up in this cliche. I recovered Earths on my way here from a place called Missouri. Hey, what's wrong with Missouri? Missouri? It's a long ride to Missouri. Home? Like his home world? No, like Missouri. Something broke through that day in Missouri. No better time of year. Pretending in-laws don't exist just so you can enjoy the holidays. The stockings were hung by the chimney. Giving f***ing Clinton Nat stockings before Steve. That's America's ass you've neglected to hang a stocking for. Uh, right. You're probably wondering who this guy is. Nah, really. I was so relieved you'd stop rhyming that I blacked out there for a second. Perhaps I should start a bit further back. Not starting your story at the beginning of the story, cliche. Unless your last name is Nolan, f*** all the way off with his chronological ignorance. Follow me and ponder the question. What if? What if the intros to these shows were worth watching like Cowboy Bebop's? What if I had the last 50 seconds of my life back? Yes, of course I'd waste them, but that isn't the point. Also, look, it's the second season. Do we really need an intro this long explaining the premise of the show? I'm pretty sure this entire thing is just an opportunity to flex about how many A-list actors you've managed to get for this show. I mean, Lake Bell? Nice. Also, also, I'm sure everyone thought that last sin was a diss directed at Lake Bell, but I am an honest-to-God Bell fan. We call ourselves Bellies. So here's a sin for you making an ass out of your umptions. I'm glad Tony's a billionaire because when that hat falls off and smothers a family of four, his insurance premiums are going to go through the roof. The caterers are here, and all I'm seeing are cheese cubes and carrot sticks. Catering your party with cheese cubes and carrot sticks. That shit goes on the charcuterie board. You put shrimp cocktails on the silver tray serving staff walk around with. This isn't hard. You've got Stark money. Use it. Uh. Hey, Happy. Her eyes are up there. After the year we've had, people need a reason to celebrate. At this point, you need a guide the size of a thesaurus to follow the MCU continuity. But when exactly does this take place? What kind of year was it? Why even have lines like this at all? Isn't this just a free-flowing whatever the f*** goes series? That one Mariah Carey song on loop? Bingo! All I want for Christmas is less cheesy pop culture references. A known criminal walks into the lobby of Avengers Tower and you're telling me he isn't immediately flagged by facial recognition technology? Or identified as carrying weapons? I know Jarvis is off polishing his frag and drives or some such, but do you have zero backup tech? Also, Justin Hammer decides to take over Avengers Tower with two henchmen. That's it. He walks into the headquarters of Earth's mightiest heroes with two f***ing goons? That wouldn't even work for a bank. But it's going to work because it has to for the story, and I hate it. But I didn't get the BB gun that Christmas. Do you know why? Shoot your eye out. Because this is America. And if you want something, you gotta take it. I'm not convinced you're in America based on your story. If you truly grew up in America, you not only got a gun when you asked for it, but you knew how to access your dad's unlocked and loaded firearms as well. And that's what makes America, America. It's been a full minute since the bullets started flying and now the alarms go off? Not after the goons started shooting? You should rename this episode to What If Avengers Tower Security Was Complete Sh**. Yeah, it's a lousy title, but I don't feel like workshopping it now. Oh look, thank goodness their eyes turned red. How else would I know that they were the evil robots? Whoa. Neither Justin nor his guards turned to see why the loud elevator dinged and opened. They didn't figure out a way to put Happy in a tank top for this scene. Greatest adversary? What are you, a wealth tax? Implying that taxes are a bigger threat to Tony than Thanos. On second thought, maybe that's right. Even the Joker doesn't take on the IRS. Shadow. Not choosing Knuckles. <laughs> what a chump move. Do you even hedgehog Happy? Why didn't he have the robots do this back when the guy pulled out the sledgehammer? Stop, stop, stop! You're gonna destroy the Hulk blood! You just told them to shoot him with all you've got. What did you think they were going to do? Yeah, that's okay. I might have enough leg for the both of us. I guess you could say Happy has a leg up on the competition. <laughs> Get it? Because, like, the leg? <laughs> uh, remember, if you don't leave nice things for me to read in the comments, I'm going to put more puns like this in the videos. Oh, you got a big box of coal coming your way, Missy. Ignoring Santa's continued threat to climate change by providing fossil fuels as a punishment for naughty behavior. 
Hey, Sasha. Happy, not a great time. I'm being held at gunpoint by a former Hydra agent. Right, but that Hydra agent apparently let you reach into your magic ballerina pocket to retrieve your massive smartphone and did not shoot you, so she'll probably be pretty lax on whatever rule is keeping you from helping Happy. Paris on Christmas? What is this, Con Air? All right, they're just doing these pop culture references to annoy me now. And I could almost respect it if not for this building blinding rage. Uh, walking my mental blockbuster aisle. Having a mental blockbuster aisle when you could instead have had a mental Hastings aisle. <sighs> I really miss Hastings. Puppet Sue, are you asking me to be a Reginald Vell Johnson? Reginald Vell Johnson, that's what you remember from the movie? <gasps> Here at TV Sins, Reginald Vell Johnson slander is one of the most unforgivable sins. Right after unnecessarily long title sequences and precocious know-it-all children. Happy, holding a bulletproof table, runs past the gunman he could have easily rammed or tackled and instead jumps out the window holding fabric that should have easily shred on the broken glass. I feel like that's worth like three sins, and I'm tired of ignoring my feelings. This is like a Narnia for dorks. Not realizing Narnia was already a Narnia for dorks. In fact, isn't all intricate mythology pop culture for dorks? Aren't dorks the new cool? This reference makes me question the ontological evolution of fandom. Who's the dork now, Darcy? Quality socks can be excellent gift. This poorly voiced Russian goon is right. I love getting socks for Christmas. If I get enough, it means I don't have to go shopping for socks during the rest of the year. As a child, you really do underestimate the value of getting socks and underwear for Christmas. You should call your Nana and apologize, like stat. It's time for that hammer to get nailed. I see what you were going for there, but this is rookie punning. For one, hammers don't get nailed. Nails get hammered. This is what happens when you don't leave the puns to the experienced professionals. You get screwed. <laughs> oh, it's like another, it's another tool in the toolbox. Hmm. I get that Hammer's an unserious villain and this is kind of a silly holiday story, but look at all these murder bots. He takes over all of them with what looks like a Kindle fire and then they just sit around while his henchmen break into a high-tech lab with a sledgehammer. Stealing the get around the sensors by substituting humans in blood for robots and oil trick from Samurai Jack. Also, shouldn't they be running off of arc reactors and not even need oil? Isn't oil used for lubrication and combustion engines? What else would these bots need to be lubed up for? Oh, I see. Why is she holding her side? Is that the new location of the leg she said she broke earlier but is now standing on? Son of a nutcracker, that monster is eating my suit! First, son of a nutcracker. Second, if you'd stored that suit in a satellite orbiting Earth like your Civil War counterpart, Happy Hulk wouldn't be eating it right now. They're spoofing a beloved Christmas movie, and then there's whatever this is. And whatever this is, is getting us in. I'm sorry about the party, Tony. I'm sure insurance will cover most of it. No insurance agent with even two brain cells would ever think about insuring anything within a one-mile radius of the Avengers Tower. That's how you bankrupt your insurance company. When Tony Stark to his team gave a whistle. I think I speak for everyone when I say some food would be beneficial. Attempting to rhyme whistle and beneficial. Allow me to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. Their names are Meter and Rhyme. Do you even iambic pentameter, bro? What? No Let It Snow? Parody ruined. I really thought this might be the first Marvel show that didn't require a previously on. Imagine my disappointment. Can't believe they got Jeff Goldblum to do this. Isn't he too busy trying to sell us an apartment we can't afford to find time to be in an episode of What If? Why do I have to sin fly, daddy? Okay, deep breaths. But in this universe, Tony never made it home. Well, damn, that was a short episode. We didn't even have enough time to say roll commercials. Also inventing a timeline where the Avengers are deprived of shawarma. Yeah. Hang on, Tony was definitely unconscious after throwing that nuke through the wormhole, presumably due to oxygen deprivation from being in space. So why is he awake and screaming now? Scientists landing on an alien world and immediately getting rid of facial protection. Name a better duo. I like what you're doing with the chin decoration there. Do we know each other? This is a sin for not actually being Robert Downey Jr. and Jeff Goldblum riffing off of each other. Has that even happened yet? How has that not actually happened yet? By the way, can I call you Mojo? Asking for permission to use a nickname after you've already said it several times. 
I mean, if you're going to needlessly waste an entire statue to prove your point, could you clear up for me why the melting globe wand thingy sent light through the whole statue, but somehow didn't melt the base? Also, Tony freaking Stark is suddenly intimidated by a single guard with a melty stick named after the most boring gemstone in existence. Yeah, this is intergalactic NASCAR. Oh, Tony. First you said it was Formula One, and then you said it was NASCAR. You're going to make a subset of racing fans very, very upset. They can be hard to tell apart. Just remember one turns in a single boring direction, and the other turns in multiple boring directions. Yeah, I said it. Come at me. Race cars are similar, but very different. Wow, that sentence told me nothing. Less than nothing, actually. I think that line might have been the LaCroix of words. It almost felt like there was something there, but now I taste nothing. It's obvious they spent a lot of time designing this fan, and they did a good job, so I almost don't mind that they used her model twice. Almost. That is some weak cheering. That's a cheer you let out at your cousin's peewee football game when he managed to run in the right direction. Hey, throw the tin cans at her. Not gonna lie, when I heard Tony Stark was gonna meet Grandmaster, I was kind of excited. I'd love to see Tony cobble together a scrap suit and take on gladiators. Instead, I've been given the most boring episode of Wacky Racers since Bad Batch Season 2. And look who it is again. I don't know, maybe they're triplets? Uh, hey! Thank you. Show introduces the concept of a chinchilla-based economy and fails to follow through on this grand capitalistic experiment that I need to see play out. Stealing the patented foot-breaking system from the Flintstones. Also giving me another What If episode with Korg. I know people were complaining about Captain Carter showing up too much, but this guy's been starting to get under my skin since Love Met Thunder. Uh, why is it sticky? Who cares? Wait, nope. Check that. I care but I'd be more concerned over where the rest of my suit was. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I specifically asked for a private no, room. No, no. Hey, you stole this scene from my fanfic. I mean, uh, Jeremy's fan fiction. I, I, I'm outraged you would steal from him so blatantly. He worked really hard on it. There's nothing over here, just a big pile of rocks with some eyes. Non-consensual voyeurism. Oh, it'll take more than laser-proof glass to rob Thanos of his victory. Yep, She's right. It'll take something much more difficult, like... Um, snapping fingers? Huh. Did they try laser-proof glass in one of the 14 million futures Doctor Strange saw? I mean, it's a great character model. You know an animator somewhere is real proud of it, but I'm going to send it every time it shows up. Right now, you must track down Mr. Metal Mojo Man. Track him down? He's in your hangar bay. He hasn't even fully escaped yet. This is a premature giant hologramming. The worst kind of all prematuring. He's not the hero we hoped. He's a very nasty, nasty man. Conveniently timed life-saving dialogue is convenient. How did she get out? Anybody? Anyone? How? Because she's the deadliest woman in the galaxy, that's how. <laughs> nah, I'm f***ing with you. She was able to get out because the plot needed her to. And why aren't you concerned about the other two people who were locked up with her as well? So you can forget whatever mistake has you chasing that demon in a bottle. The MCU once again taunts me with a classic Iron Man storyline that they're never going to have the stones to do. What's so risky about turning the head of your billion dollar franchise into a raging alcoholic? Yeah, might as well kill him off instead, cowards. This is Demon Rum, top shelf, gold label. Sadly, Demon Rum is the closest Mephisto will come to appearing in the MCU. Can't wait for Agatha all along so fans can nitpick every little detail and crumb to predict when he'll show up. It's gonna be fun on the bun. Ugh, smells like burnt yarrow root. Expecting me to care enough about intergalactic fauna to understand this reference. Ever hear of campground rules? Always leave a place better than you found it. As if I'm to believe Stark has ever been to a campground outside of an expensive RV. I know a glamper when I see one. Sir, there's no reason to do this. Hush up! Topaz would be a grand master at TV sins. There she is again. Also, I recognize the woman in front of her too. Here's another 15 sins so I can be done playing Alien Where's Waldo for the rest of this episode. Episode has time for an unearned slow motion walk. Oh, I love this vehicle. Loving a vehicle without explicit consent from said vehicle. This is why Speed Buggy has like 700 restraining orders. My point is, people can change, and for the better. But I'm not my father. You're not your father. I made a choice. And I'm Iron Man. Ooh. I'm torn because I kind of love this, but he's the villain and I'm supposed to be rooting against him. It's like when a wrestler is a heel, but he's generating the wrong kind of heat. I don't want to keep reminding myself that the Grandmaster's a bad guy. I'm not here to do that kind of actual work. I started watching TV to avoid feeling my feelings. Thank 
you, Gamora. This is a good moment for Gamora, but you're going to tell me Mr. Billionaire Playboy Philanthropist entered a death race with a car that didn't have any weapons? This isn't over, Stark. I know, Gamora. Unfortunately, we still have a few more minutes of super dull racing to endure. I'm almost starting to miss your sister's Blade Runner knockoff. Driving in flip-flops. Oh, hey, did you guys forget that there was an arc reactor in Tony's chest? <laughs> yeah, me neither. Ooh, that feels good. Ooh, ooh, viscous. Jeff Goldblum's O face. Also, that O face is entirely avoidable. He had so much time to move his foot away from the goopify rod. So much time. Ah, one drink. Just one drink that doesn't taste like a theme park urinal. Oh, very oddly specific, Tony. Care to share with the class the research you did to come to this conclusion? So close to home, his odyssey almost at an end. Except... Is it an odyssey if you only go to one place? Because if so, I've been on an odyssey of watching TV on this couch for years. <laughs> Why the suspense? We know this works, right? Because we already know this Gamora goes on to become a guardian of the multiverse. She's even wielding Thanos' spinny sword thing in the beginning of the episode. It's almost like this episode was meant to be in last season and you're trying to shoehorn it in here. It makes for no tension in this episode. Or is there going to be another episode next season titled, What if the Grandmaster's weird melty ball thingy didn't work on Thanos? So here's another episode that's going to need a previously on because we forgot what season it was. I think a bucket and a mop at this point. Stealing your lyrics from Cardi B. Oh, goody. We get to see the big battle from the first Avengers movie from yet another angle and or timeline. That's never been done before. Thanks, Cap. Choosing the time period when you're still being attacked from all angles to thank someone. Save the thanks and shawarma for after the fight, Widow. Widow, let's go for a ride. I like it. Using vague terminology to infer a very specific action you need to take place. And somehow the other party knew exactly what you meant. You go high, I go low. Or we could just punch him a whole lot. Nothing about going high or low prevents you from punching Loki a whole lot. Captain Carter merely proposed angles from which said punching could take place. I don't do sequels. Normally. <laughs> uh, oh. He's serious? <laughs> Running in circles has never been my style. You don't have to run in circles. There are these really neat things called trails, some of which even go in straight lines. Also, skipping leg day. I don't care if you have the super soldier serum inside you. You never skip leg day. Not Steve. More like Robocop. Uh, uh, what? You haven't seen that? We'll rent it. Solid movie. I don't care what universe you're in. Referring to Robocop as simply a solid movie is always insulting. And sinful. I thought the slow motion hair was more of an Aquaman thing, but I guess DC Marvel still have the superhero see, superhero do philosophy. Also, if you haven't seen the new Aquaman, don't rent it. Not a solid movie. I'm Peggy Carter, and we're talking about Steve Rogers. Which is exactly why you should sit this one out. Thanks for proving Nick Fury's point in less than 10 seconds. Sir, we believe there might be an attempt on your life. Saying this before the meeting was over and with several witnesses in tow, any of whom could be compromised. There's this neat thing called whispering. You should try it. You can say all kind of neat things like, you should really watch Bluey, or size might not matter, but shape kind of does, or even Hail Hydra. Well, I'm glad to see that Steve is stupid enough to employ the only shoot at the indestructible shield strategy that fails in every other universe, including the Wonder Woman movie. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Move, move. Taking the assassination target to the roof when you know your enemy's flying in the sky directly outside. Maybe ground transportation or an underground tunnel would have been smarter. Let's get a drink. Like the old days. Suggesting that substances can fix brainwashing. I'm pretty sure it just make that worse. When I got hypnotized at a show in Vegas last year, I somehow added gummies to the mix and wound up making advances towards 32 slot machines in Caesar's Palace. So as you can see, substances and brainwashing are clearly not a great combo. At least I think that's the lesson I was supposed to learn. Well, this is all the bullshit. Did the animators forget objects of different masses fall at the same rate of speed? Newton. Look him up. We're in! Oh, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! This works. Or they survive this. You choose. I choose both. What can I say, Peg? I'm... I'm a sucker for a good love story. Black Widow isn't curled up next to me on the couch watching while you were sleeping in this scene. No fun playing Russian roulette with biotech, huh? Can you name a single instance where playing Russian roulette is fun? Biotech or otherwise, it seems like kind of a bummer of a game. The KGB built it to look like an American town straight out of a John Mellencamp song. Scene does not contain little pink houses for you and me. Also, leaving the cougar out of the John and the Mellencamp. We didn't like it when the actual John Cougar Mellencamp did it, so you're not getting a pass, Natasha. 
Barton introduced me to dad rock. The idea that there's actually a genre of any media out there that is dad-centric. All dads are different and like different things. And yes, more like westerns than don't, but just f*** off. The good, the bad, and the ugly is the sh. And you all know I'm right. You smell that air? That's the smell of freedom. I learned from Team America World Police that freedom costs a buck oh five, and I don't want to smell anything that only costs a buck oh five. It's a baby! Wow. This entire animatronic town waited until they were about to kiss before activating their weapons. So the lesson here is abstinence is the only safe way to avoid being killed by Russian robots. Just like they teach in sex ed. Russia thought America was like this? We didn't get cable TV over here, so... Thinking that American television in any way represents America. Well, except Love Island, of course. That pretty much nails it. Is that the infamous Red Room? The f***. Did I miss something? They had Peggy Carter down. Why didn't they just shoot her or capture her? The bad guys just let Natasha walk up and Peggy recover? You never struck me as a child foolish enough to buy into fantasy. Pretending fantasy is a childish genre like some literary snob. Have you read Jim Butcher? All my widows have seen your movie. There was a movie? It was a musical. Depriving audiences of a full MCU musical. And no, the singing planet in the Marvels doesn't count. Somehow flunking out of the Prometheus school of running away from things. I didn't even think that was possible. And this stuff. Aim for her left knee. She damaged it in bicycle accident in third grade. Funny how this injury has never come up or caused Natasha any trouble in any other MCU appearance. A bum knee's a pretty serious handicap. At least that's what I keep telling myself every time I shoot 90 at my local course. Steve, I can't. I can't lose you again. There is still nothing in the What If series that has irritated me more than making Peggy one of the most powerful people in the universe only to still make her live or die by how Steve f***ing Rogers feels about her. <laughs> Winning your spy battle with Looney Tunes antics. Steve's out there somewhere, and I know you don't believe he can be saved, but I do. I have to. Okay. Let's hit the road. Continuing to try to convince us that Steve and Peggy have to be together when this universe has shown Peggy has much more chemistry with Natasha. Peggy! Peg! Where are you? That's a good question. Being confused by your own story. The Tesseract survived Ragnarok. Isn't the whole point of Ragnarok that it's a never-ending cycle? So shouldn't Asgard, like, immediately begin to rise from the ashes? Am I mixing up my mythologies? Maybe. But am I wrong? Yeah, probably. Grabbing someone's ear without permission. Sticking your face directly into someone's smoke hole. Also known as roof vaping. <laughs> Calmly explaining why something's cursed doesn't make it any less so, nor does it make it a better idea to take your little brother along. No guards are present to keep people from entering what is supposedly forbidden. Apparently this tribe attended the Lion King School of Forbidding Entry to Things. Ah! Convenient cave trapdoor is convenient. You're splitting up with your brother here? I can't even trust kids that age not to eat glue, but you're trusting him to find a hiding spot in a life or death situation? Main character gets shot in the shoulder so we know they won't die, cliche. Also, expecting me to believe the soldier made this shot from several feet away with a firearm from the 1600s in the dark when I just missed my trash can from two feet away in a fully lit temperature controlled room. What's going on here, Ado? Going ESS, easy, now go on here. Expecting me to believe Corey made it to Skyworld without the assistance of a Sheikah Tower. Waiting until more than one kid went missing in the lake before declaring it forbidden. Also, William Spirit Knifeman isn't calling me a ass in this scene. He just told you his name. I'm terrible with names, but even I can remember them for 30 freaking seconds. Wait a second. Crashing into a strange land without explanation? People here have superhuman abilities? They don't age or die? And they can't go home? This is a little too much in common with the Star Trek episode of Futurama, and you can't steal from two of the greatest sci-fi shows ever and not limp away with a sin. ¿Dónde está? How did you think threatening them in a different language was going to work? You could put a gun to my head and ask me the same question, I wouldn't be able to answer either. Unless you were asking about the Biblioteca, which is, uh, shit. I can't remember. Now I have to go look it up in a book somewhere. Waiting until Kahori falls on her ass before mentioning people have tried this before. Also, none of you have ever considered combining your powers to lift someone out of here? Really? Better yet, there are all these trees around. Why not build some kind of structure, like a tower? Even better yet, invent an airplane and fly out. You have so many options, and I haven't even gotten to my extreme trampolining idea yet. 
Lies. I got it so fast my first time. Wait, what were we talking about again? Between Quicksilver and Makari, Marvel would seem to have super speed covered pretty well as a power, but just in case we weren't sick of it yet, the MCU gives us not one, but an entire group of speedsters. I'm as forgetful as they come, but even I wouldn't have forgotten about the stampeding space buffalo I've been chasing for the last five minutes. And they just go around her? Really? Very considerate stampeding. Top notch. ¿Quién quiere ser el primero en alcanzar la gloria de la inmortalidad? Assuming longevity is served in slices. It's immortality, not a pizza, bro. Wouldn't you just drink the water first? And why would you wade in with your clothes or carrying your gun? They'll need both where they're going because they're the bad guys, but they don't know that. I mean, you can't leave. So in a sense, yes, it's still a prison. It's just a really cool and colorful prison. Just like the Avengers compound where Wanda was under house arrest, had a swimming pool, giant TVs and a full kitchen. But since she couldn't leave, it was still a prison. Oh, sh did that portal lead Kaori to the Matrix? Was she the one before Neo? I have so many questions. Pointing your gun for dramatic effect when you haven't even had time to reload it. I don't fault her for how harsh she is, but damn, here I am chilling in paradise for centuries only to have someone who I have known for a day literally flip my world upside down and tell me I'm a piece of shit unless I go and help her kill Spaniards. Such a buzzkill. Yes, it's fun to watch Kahori kick all the ass, but I'm still not sure what happened to the Spaniards who went through the portal. Where are they? Did they die? Get sent back to our world? Land in a Krispy Kreme in 21st century Cleveland? Cañones! A los cañones! Thinking your men on the ships can hear your commands from shore. Because they can <laughs> uh, uh. I could complain about how strong Corey is after like a single day, but no, I'm going to complain about the insane grouping of these cannonballs. It took what, 10 seconds to draw a bead on the lone figure on a beach about a mile away and they're this accurate? Bull. Sh Managing to take the witch down with apparently the greatest cannoneers of all time and instead of quickly finishing her off, just grunting at her long enough for someone to come rescue her. <gasps> Tribus Ex Machina. Now that's how you trample someone. How is he still conscious though? And are they following proper concussion protocol? Zoki, way on geese today. And timed our entrance as dramatically as possible. You're welcome. The man was literally stomped into the sand and is no worse for wear. If not for the murder, pillaging, and slave taking, his indomitable spirit would be impressive. What kind of clasp is on that necklace? It's been ripped off like twice in this episode so far. Now that's some solid craftsmanship, or just really convenient. But Kahori's victory wasn't because she merely chose the right man. No, it was her conviction because she remained true to her course. Okay, but remaining true to her course sounds an awful lot like choosing the right path. So totally not important, but do they just have superpowers now or will they have to go back to the sky realm to replenish? And since some of them are centuries old, if they lose their powers, are they just going to rapidly age and turn into dust? Because I've seen a lot of movies and I think they're underestimating the dust possibilities. Ha perdido el nuevo mundo. Thinking you can lose something that you never had in the first place. Also, are all of the Queen ships landing in the exact same spot? Or did Kaori's warriors spread up and down the East Coast to fight off any colonizers that dared land in what would otherwise have become the USA? Because that's a lot of land to cover for the hundred or so people with powers we saw. How did Kahori know where to open this portal, let alone what was across the Atlantic Ocean? I assume the Spaniards told her roughly where they came from, but did she get precise enough instructions to open a portal in the throne room? Vuestra magia no me infunde ningún temor. No? She just teleported into your court and stuck halberds to your ceiling, and you're cool with that? At the very least, I'd be questioning the dosage of my gummy regiment. Oh, no habrá futuro para vuestro pueblo. I don't know what's more surprising. The fact that everyone there isn't running for their lives at the sight of magic, or the fact that Kahori's taking the time to learn how to speak perfect Spanish. I mean, I think it's perfect Spanish. I heard her say mucho once. Also, I have to give Marvel their props for taking the extra care to use the indigenous language and customs throughout this episode. And by props, I mean a single sin back. Savor it. May have to last you a while. World peace in record time. Sure, that'll last. Oh, hey! I don't even need subtitles for this part. But isn't it strange how he just assumes she knows English? Also, Marvel, why are you doing that thing where you bring in that one big guest star at the end to tease something else? Why can't I just watch something without having to crack open my official Marvel timeline encyclopedia? Why does almost nothing in my standalone episodic series stand alone? Also, also, thinking that a treaty between an indigenous tribe in Spain constitutes world peace. This hat does not suit him. One by one, the branches of the world's tree fell under their control. You say world's tree, I say world tree. You say Yggdrasil, I say Gardasil. 
you wish to stop at nine realms. There comes a point in time, my dear, when a warrior must lay down his sword and give up the fight. Whether it's nine realms, nine cheeseburgers, or nine flights of stairs, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to give up after you've completed the conquering. You wanting me to give up the fight when that's all you ever raised me to do. I learned it by watching you, Dad. Cliché. You see, Father, without a fight, I'm no one. Kids. Someone at Marvel looked at 14 million possible storylines and couldn't find one where Mjolnir wasn't murdered. Whosoever wears this crown, should she know mercy, shall possess the power of Hela. There's something like a few thousand people in the U.S. named Mercy, so congrats on creating a huge loophole, Odin. Also, Odin forcing this crown to discriminate based on gender. Also, also, Odin is yet again allowed to engage in questionable parenting without someone calling the god of child protective services. Rain. The miracle of nature that brings the sky down to earth. Yeah, but it also ensures that tears from replicants are lost forever, so it has its downsides. That power, it is not of this realm. Reminding me that the MCU still hasn't told us where these rings come from. Continuing the Thorverse tradition of subverting our rainy fight scene expectations by making one of the combatants an inanimate object. Hella survives this. I would be honored if you would join me for dinner. Because of the power of Wenwu's boner. Wedding day? Skip. Because I am not your father. Crushing all the fanfic writers who have daddy issues with a single line. That's cruel. Even by my standards. <sighs> Hell is magnificent. Shame on Marvel for thinking that barely more than 20 minutes with his character would be anywhere near enough. What, are you saying you know a way to get out of here? It's super convenient that Morris 2D2 was just sitting around waiting to help a stranger on their hero's journey. You assured me that which I seek was beyond this valley, and yet here we are, a dead end. With or without her powers, I wouldn't have thought the goddess of death would be so deterred by trees. There won't be a civilization in there for miles. The person who followed the flying ass cheeks here suddenly has overwhelming confidence in their topographical knowledge of the area. Run? What do you mean, run? From what? Wasting running time by asking running questions. BMW iX3 from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is apparently as fast as this horse, and I do not believe you. Hmm. Hello. She has fallen from my view. Hmm, Heimdall. You have fallen me asleep. Also, my dad has this new girlfriend, Frigga. She's a dreadful woman. Hello's one of the best and most badass parts of Thor Ragnarok, so naturally Marvel decided to give her tons of quips and jokes, and now child hates their stepmom tropes. When it reaches its zenith, your training begins. Title of my sex tape? We have methods to ensure she won't betray us. When your method is a dragon, you can just say we have a dragon. Ten rings that could even destroy a god. Mm. If such power indeed exists on Midgard, there's no telling what its people could be capable of. Mm. If such power indeed exists on Midgard, it's odd that you're only finding out about it right now when the story needs you to take your place as the primary antagonist. Just breathe, Hela. Just breathe. Oh no, don't you dare get caught up in the touch, the slow and steady rush, and go on dragging Faith Hill into this. Jaju is the art of making something out of nothing. But if you've given Hella paper, she doesn't have nothing, she has paper, which is definitely something. So the sin, as always, is that words actually have meaning. Of finding infinite possibility in the blankest of canvases. Marvel says this while simultaneously managing to find the blankest of possibilities in infinite canvases. Yes, in life the true struggle is not with your enemies, but with your laundry. Father, why did you chain him? So, Hela becomes evil because Odin refuses to walk her dog off leash. Got it. What is it you hope to find at the end of your next great conquest? Honestly, I'd just like my rent to stop going up every year. Oh, you were asking Hela. But still, housing prices, am I right? Freedom. Freedom from control. And just like that, all of Hela's bloodlust has been spray and washed away like the soul sustain in my one good shirt. Everything in life pertains to our practice. Does that everything include the 30 minutes I spent this morning beatboxing to the theme of Knight Rider? Because if that's the case, I'm well on my way to moving flower petals with my mind. Odin terrorizes the countryside in my name. He seeks the Ten Rings. That's a pretty big leap. You saw one sky beam from miles away. I don't even know it's Odin, let alone what he's come to Midgard for. Did you read the script? Make some dragon scales. And view with the strength to combat threats of untold mystical power. Not since Rick Flagg's seminal recitation of This is Katana, She's Got My Back, I Would Advise Not Getting Killed By Her, Her Sword Traps the Souls of Its Victims, have I seen such masterful and subtle delivery of exposition. Personally, I miss the dress, though. Is one of the Ten Rings currently fastened elsewhere, constantly providing power to his boner? 
Embrace me, daughter. I have come far to avenge your name. One, this was weird. Two, having the keys to the Bifrost makes the distance traveled seem pretty irrelevant. Three, this was weird. Albeit animated, Marvel proves its own guilt by showing us that it does in fact know what a good fight scene looks like. Fire knife. The luck-based bullshit alchemy that made sure her ridiculous knives ablaze and fire line paid off. Since when does my daughter pass on a chance to end her life? It should be obvious that it was sometime after you sent her on a mission to befriend a person named Mercy. Do you not remember, or are you actually disappointed that your daughter learned the lesson you initially tasked her with learning? Instead of realizing that the return of her crown and the kick-ass light show are signs of a new and interesting development, Odin opts for one more chance to try and kill his daughter. Even with both eyes, you see only half the picture. Odin survives this. I mean, not only am I cool with his death at this point, but that was pretty freaking dramatic for something you can just shrug off like a punch. Only from there can I unmake your empire. But when I'm finished, the Nine Realms will know freedom. The Nine Realms would also like to know when you and your father are going to stop destabilizing their governments. I gave peace a chance. When the f*** did that happen? Episode just showed us 20 minutes of Hela threatening to fight, training to fight, and then fighting. Way to break the immersion of this being a real skull. You can totally see the ancient 17th century barcode marks on it. One go to. When can we start throwing cabbages at him? I brought a whole bushel and they're rotten. Having 32 pounds of rotten vegetation lying around for entertainment purposes. It's another rift! Am I to believe the people of One Go Two would call this a rift instead of God's punishing light? Marvel property decides someone needs to save someone else from a mysterious portal cliche. My king? I am... She is cursed. Well, that escalated quickly. Capcar goes from trusted guard to cursed and pursued, and the only thing that happened in between was she failed to save Hela? Maleago Frailty, thy name is Thor Odinson. What you're seeing has all the makings of a Shakespearean tragedy. Maybe, but what I'm hearing has all the markings of some more pretentious watcheration. The Scarlet Witch Wanda Maximoff used her powers to reach into a neighboring universe for a warrior. Ah yes, Scarlet Witch. Her power set consists of being an all-powerful universe changer, which in the MCU means only exactly as powerful as needed to do the thing that the plot needs her to do this time. And so, the captain joined the heroes of 1602 in their desperate bid to save their world. And so quickly too. Peggy saw a familiar face or two and just jumped right in on that. Worlds die every day. I've watched millions fade from existence. It happens. Well, not on my watch. Saying you can outwatch the watcher as he's right there watching you say it. Also, how arrogant do you have to be to assume that you can single-handedly stop a world from dying? And how, pray tell, shall we find this fellow? Assuming the aforementioned timey-wimey person is a fellow and not a shallow. No one else in this room sees Captain Carter playing Batman in the window. Probably radioactive. Ooh, wait, active what now? God, I love your made-up words. I'm more impressed by this highly advanced microscope that absolutely did not exist in One Go 2. Surely there was a version of a microscope then, but it was not this. Your carriage looks like it could use some lightning of its load. <sighs> Roger's hood. Roger's hood? Roger's hood? No! That's not how naming works. Robin Hood was a name for a thief long before the Robin Hood stories, probably because it sounds like Robin. If you're in England and you encounter a Roger in Hood, that's a whole different skill set. Whoa, what treasure is this? Treasure that should have made an absolute mess of that chest after being stored so poorly for transport down a bumpy road, that's what. My maid Margaret passed to the other side many moons ago. Maid Margaret is an anthropomorphic fox in this scene. Hi. 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 Oh, and f*** you and the MCU's overinvestment in the idea of relationship destiny between these two and the way it impacts culture's view on finding the one as if there's some magical single other human that's going to be everything to you if you just search long enough. And I really should have said this a long time ago, but skip. Is there some place we can talk? What's wrong with where you are now? Isolated wooden path not private enough for you? Scene does not contain a jub-jub. No one drinks like this. His head is fully back before his lips hit the cup, so any liquid would fall all over his face. But instead, he's able to just sip just fine, which only means there is barely any ale in this cup. Which is dumb. Whiplash for barely any ale is not a worthwhile cervical sacrifice. My Margaret would want to save this world, too. That was her specialty. Her specialty was wanting to save the world? Really? What is it with all these people and thinking they can save the world? Does the show think we've forgotten that the MCU demands all heroes be dead set on saving everyone? We know. We f***ing get it. Tell me something new about these people. Do they like mangoes? Are they angry when someone comes to their door to solicit? Can they knit? Oh no. Men, we've got company! So close the f***ing window! So much for the secret treehouse! You were trying to keep this secret? This? 
And this is like phase one of Lothlorien. Barton sends his regards, Hogan. That sounds like the kind of thing you're supposed to say after you've defeated your enemy. Fire! Not starting with this at the beginning when you had the element of surprise. Are you watching? Always. The Technopoly. I'm unable to see the coming events clearly when a universe is close to extinction. Well, isn't that convenient? You cannot possibly comprehend the consequences of your actions. Something I told my nephew when he opened up the packaging of my sealed Kenner Star Wars Obi-Wan action figures from 1977 makes its way into the script. What if, what if, what if? Roll commercials, roll commercials, roll commercials. This really isn't a sin. It's just a reminder to get your eyes checked often because there are some pretty serious things that happen with your vision. I don't know why Hulk is okay with being ridden like a beast of burden in this scene, but he is, and it's dumb. I don't know why Hulk is also okay with being ridden like a beast of burden in this scene, but he is, and it's really f***ing dumb. It will reveal the Forerunner and send them back from whence they came. Did the show's technology department forget that the year is one go to? Come on, choir. This is not the time to accompany the rift with intricate harmony. Why would Hulk say this outside of the need for a lame callback to the first Avengers movie? He's not fighting gods. He's fighting regular soldiers. We'll keep them busy. You get the scepter. Is this just now being discussed while in the middle of the most important fight heist of the existence of their entire world? Coronation gift from the king of Wakanda. I'm not sure why every one of the popular characters of the MCU has to be mentioned or appear in this episode, but it doesn't make it any better. Their appearance doesn't answer basic questions like how they all got there in the first place or why only they disappear here in a moment, but Peggy remains. The show just wants to parade the hits in front of us, hoping we're so excited to see them that we forget to care about the story. Well, joke's on you, MCU. We actually do care about the story. Hear that, Bruce? The pipes! The pipes are calling! Funny, but Danny Boy wasn't written until 1910, so you're about three centuries too early to use this reference. I've had enough of your devilry. He says this as if it's a bad thing. Does he not realize Peggy's adjacent to an actual witch wearing a horn-like headdress currently shooting red energy into a portal after having successfully cast a summoning spell? Get the scepter to Stark! Wait, Scarlet Witch was in on it the whole time and let this entire battle carry on without helping until the very last second? People are dying. Where's their sense of urgency? And pop goes the weasel. That phrase wasn't made popular until the 1800s. Are we in one go too or aren't we? He's the future man. Oh, so now Thor is super interested in listening to Carter about saving the world this way. It's almost like they just wanted all the characters to fight for no f***ing reason whatsoever. But you, Watcher, come here to gloat. Tell me that I'm stuck here forever. Are you stuck there forever? What's stopping the Watcher from sending you home now? Is anyone ever going to explain this? Aw, this is cute. It's doing the opening credits just like a movie. It thinks it's people. Captain Peggy Carter. A warrior out of her own time. This show feels like it's stuck between being a hey look at all this crazy Marvel sh type show and a Captain Carter show. Instead of choosing one, they just did both. But doing it previously on based on one character who's been in nearly half the episodes throughout the two seasons is just a waste of everybody's time. Now, the captain once lost in the future is trapped in the past. But not her past? Damn it. I'm just gonna pop some Advil now before my head starts hurting too much. Dr. Stephen Strange had been on a difficult journey of his own. And another character focused previously on. Well, at least all this time wasted isn't going to cause us to rush through a bunch of cool sh** later. Glad that would never happen. But it was only as the world collapsed around him that he saw the error of his ways. Did he though? This is called reverse foreshadowing, kids, and it's hella sinful. Two legends must band together to face a threat unlike any the multiverse has ever faced. Cheeky watcher, you set this whole intro up to be about Strange and Capcar, but the two heroes you're actually talking about are her and Kahori, you manipulative liar. Sorry, but I don't like my watchers to also be unreliable narrators. I am your guy through these vast new realities. With all the repeat characters and plots, I think you may be overselling the vastness. I'd probably call them vaguely familiar realities. Like one of those times when you may have eaten something that tasted how something else had smelled. This is certainly uh, rustic. As someone who's gone camping in cabins in the Ozarks many times, I no longer trust your definition of the word rustic. Your self-imposed penance? Ha ha ha, remember that time you lost the love of your life and went mad and then ultimately destroyed your entire universe? A oh, wink wink. Gremlins, aliens, Jurassic Park. Collect enough dangerous, well, anything, and something always escapes. Jurassic Park checks out, sure, but I don't remember Ridley trying to start a xenomorph zoo. And the gremlin thing is more about improper pet care, so maybe leave throwing out the pop culture references for reference sake to the pros. Strange. How will I know it's her? Oh, 
trust me. You'll know. Having detailed villainous plans that relied on the you'll figure it out method of instruction. It's not about watching, Peggy. It's about seeing. Ah, yes. Seeing. A rather famous non-synonym for watching. Superheroes meet and fight at first for no reason, cliche. God forbid any of these encounters begin with a bit of dialogue. Hey, are you evil? What? Me evil? Of course not. I stand for truth, justice, and the British way. Aw, well, now I can't taint punch you for no reason. My name is Gohorty, and I think we can help each other. Nothing says I think we can help each other like kicking someone repeatedly. Strange isn't trying to save universes. He's trying to resurrect his universe. Why would Strange send Carter after Kahori when it would take her all of two minutes to explain his clearly evil plan? I mean, sure, there's no show if he sent Carter home and grabbed Kahori himself, but still, hell of a thing to be one piece away from achieving your goal and then getting really lazy about it. I must never do this. For Steve. Does Vibranium have magic canceling properties? I feel like Peggy blocked Steven's magic a little too easily here. Throwing a punch this futile like you think you're Trevor Belmont fighting Dracula. <laughs> hey look, it's Marvel playing the hits again. Yeehaw! And speaking of her playing something, isn't this entire episode the plot of the last Doctor Strange movie except with him as the bad guy? This show was supposed to be fun new stuff, Marvel. Whoa, the scenery suddenly got really spooky. Better drop out of super speed to investigate. Zombies are pretty universal. Are you sure they're universal? Because AMC is the one that keeps making Walking Dead spinoffs, so I'd wager if anyone owns zombies by now, it's probably them. I am as the rip and tear soundtrack isn't playing in the background as he says this. <laughs> it was cooler the first time this happened. I'm gonna start calling this show What If I Understood That Reference The Show. I get playing the hits, they're hits for a reason, and snapping and turning someone to dust, of course, it's super cool, but this show is supposed to be fun new stuff, Marvel. <laughs> Impressive arm glowing, but uh, why aren't you just snapping them to dust? Does winning fights get old after a while or something? <laughs> Stealing your sound effects from Half-Life. You've lived in solitude far too long, Strange. <laughs> Look, solitude's a beautiful city, but you gotta travel more, Steven. Have you even seen Whiterun or Winterhold? Doesn't have to end this way. Don't worry, Steven, it won't. There's still 10 minutes left in the runtime. Being defeated by the appearance of a vaguely large group of butterflies. You're not him. Bad guy tries to trick you into thinking you're living the perfect life, but it all turns out to be a lie cliche. Cheap trick, strange. Trying to be the dream police. <laughs> uh, because Cheap Trick sings that song. Next, sin, please. Are they falling just because of gravity? Because I'm pretty sure like at least half of these people could fly. I mastered that one a long time ago. And yet, even having mastered it, you still got your ass beat by Maw. Kahori, you did it! You sent them home! You sent all the mostly evil universe-killing bad guys back to their universes. Yay? Part of me thinks this is dumb, but a bigger part of me is all f yeah. But I'm ashamed of that part, so this gets a sin anyway. Whoa, this wasn't covered in the previously on. Why even have one if you're not going to tell me he can turn into a demon? What, were you actually expecting me to watch all of these episodes and pay attention? Nothing is ever over. The Fast Franchise. Peggy survives using all the stones without a gauntlet or armor or a withering arm. On one hand, the animation in this sequence is stunning. On the other hand, he just ate Mjolnir, so why is this punch affecting him at all? On the third hand, maybe she's using all the combined Infinity Stones at the same time, increasing her attack power enough to affect him. On a fourth hand, I'm embarrassing myself, and only a couple minutes away from uploading videos discussing Dragon Ball Z power levels. No, I can't. My grief is too strong. Ah, oh, classic Marvel. Telling instead of showing. I know you only have 30 minutes, but you could at least give us a glance at strange grieving. Subtract a minute of the hero shooting energy beams and give us a human moment for this strange for f**k's sake. Never mind. I guess his weakness is just getting punched in the f**king face. Gory can run fast enough to run on walls, so why not just zip down there, grab her, and zip back up? It must be her eye for tension. It's so much more dramatic this way. I take it this means I'm... Not dead. What gave it away? Was it the lack of a talking hippo? Call me an ass if you want, but there have been too many butterflies in this episode. I am sick of the butterflies. There are like so many different insects. Perhaps we could take the scenic route home. Just once, I'd like for one of these superhero types to learn their lesson and just go home and stay there. Like me. Trying to piggyback your sh season onto Loki because you just realized it's the only finale you've had so far that actually worked. Echo, 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 echo. 
already cracked the case, huh? I give you my words, the case will be investigated in a very slipshod manner. Please stop staring at my titties. Until someone saw the light. Too bright, it burns! Ah. Alert, alert! A chucky nut bar has been removed without payment! This was your plan? You are the worst leader I've ever seen. To the Batmobile! Commence download. Downloading films is stealing. If you do it, you will face the consequences. About those guns. Guns! Can't deliver the goods? Maybe you should keep your traps shut! Already cracked the case, huh? I give you my words, the case will be investigated in a very slipshod manner. Please stop staring at my titties. Until someone saw the light. Too bright, it burns! Ah. Alert, alert! A chucky nut bar has been removed without payment! This was your plan? You are the worst leader I've ever seen. To the Batmobile! Commence download. Downloading films is stealing. If you do it, you will face the consequences. About those guns. Guns! Can't deliver the goods? Maybe you should keep your traps shut! Rosebud. Oh! <laughs> you're having a party! Are you asking me to be a Reginald Vell Johnson? Reginald Vell Johnson, that's what you remember from the movie? Walkie talkie die hard, motherfucker. The caterers are here, and all I'm seeing are cheese cubes and carrot sticks. Where's the showmanship? I just got out of a six-year relationship, okay? That should help explain why I'm acting so weird. I just wanted you to know that it, it's not you, it's me. I'm sorry. This is Mike. I got Hulk blood pumping through me. That makes me so angry. I feel the change coming. Release the fog. Release the Kraken. Pressure of the Chitorinos, the defeater of Thanos. Who? Making cafes. Power <laughs> the small animals. Can I offer you a charming little dribble? Now this is pod racing. Did you find a bucket? I use a bucket and a mop at this point. Moisturize me, moisturize me. Where did that move come from? From my ears, from my ass. Or we could just punch him a whole lot. Mm. I don't want to punch my dad anymore. I found what the pirates were after. Well, I think it's booty. Booty. Fire. Stand down. Stand down. Oh, I will not stand down. You will stand down. Are you certain you killed him? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Who wants apple pie? Does taste like apple pie. They lock us in the tower whenever we get caught. How's the peeping, Tommy? How's the peeping? What's that stupid yard there, to enter the forbidden pool bears the penalty of death. Don't they stop? Offering to shoot us might not work so well as an incentive as you might imagine. All those moments will be lost in time like tears in rain. That's gonna leave a mark. The folds in a piece of paper. It's more than a linear path. Then show me. Why don't you show me yours first? When your mind is at peace, it's a prism. What the f was that? The breath in your lungs. Smell bad! And when you dare to live the lessons, then you become the prism. I sent you here to learn, to grow, and in the end... I was trying to kill you. I doubt our new king will let me borrow his scepter. You flip too hard, damn it! Tell them the men in black sent you. When can we start throwing cabbages at him? I brought a whole bushel, and they're rotten. No, oh, my cabbages! Whoa, what treasure is this? Victoria sponge, pineapple cakes, marzipan. Buck, they got marzipan! Oh, uh, hey, marzipan. Are you watching? Always. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. Now, the captain once lost in the future seeks to return to the past and undo the future that is our coup. It's about seeing. Even when you had two eyes, you'd see only half the picture. Don't do this! No! 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 Is that the best you can do? No. 